we had to sing the song like four times. Because <laughs> we kept getting more and more guys into the locker room. All right, please be joined by the national champion, North Dakota State Bison. Closest to me, head coach Chris Kleiman, and then the student athletes, Easton Stick, Darius Shepard, and Levi Jordheim. We'll start with an opening statement from head coach Kleiman, followed by questions for the student athletes. We'll dismiss the student athletes and then have questions for Coach Kleiman after that. So, Coach Kleiman, you bet. Please leave uh, Obviously, we're really thrilled and excited about the, the win today. I knew it was going to be extremely hard, and I knew our guys knew that as well. Eastern Washington had nothing to lose, and they were a really good football team. Um, and the game was back and forth. We were able to make a few more plays in the second half. Uh, I, I, the time of possession was huge, and we were able to control the football and control the clock. Give them credit. They made some plays on us, and, and, uh, and, and we missed some opportunities as well, both sides of the ball. But uh, I couldn't be more proud of these 24 seniors um, we talked in, in July when we were over at Father Meyer's house for a little dinner that um, this was one of the goals. And we didn't say it publicly, but every one of those guys in, in, that was with me that day would have said, um, we want it to be perfect this year. And uh, we knew it was going to be hard, but if we attacked every day and uh, held each other to the high standard um, that we all expect, we could do that. And, I'm telling you, there wasn't one one week where I just said, man, we just weren't ready to play. And you guys can see our schedule. We were ready to play every week, and that's hard in college football. Every week to answer the bell is hard in college football, especially when you've played as many games as we have. And those guys answer the bell every stinking week. Uh, so proud of these guys. They know how much I love them. Uh, I was a senior today as well. I got to go out with these guys. So uh, appreciate the heck out of them. Coach, thank you. We have two microphones around the room, Megan to – the near side here, Josh to the far side, and we'll start in front. Uh, Eric Peterson for uh, newspapers. This is for Levi. I just talk about the, the fumble um, sack, strip sack that Stanley Jones, the play he made uh, at, at the start of the third quarter and how key you feel that was. I mean, that was uh, obviously we talk about momentum, uh, game and momentum for the Bison. Uh, and uh, Stan came up big for us off the edge and saw the ball pop out and he hopped on it. And uh, that was an incredible play by him. Over to the left, second row. Craig Haley from Stats. Uh, for the players, that, as uh, seniors, Coach just mentioned about wanting to be perfect this year. Can you talk about that goal and what it what it means to you when you when you're going to be looking back on on a 15 and 0 season? Uh, it's pretty special. Um, it's uh, there's some crazy expectations um, at this program, and uh, we wouldn't want any any other way. Uh, it's unbelievable. Um, what's been created and, and what's been upheld and um, shoot yeah there's 24 of us and, and coach and sat together and uh, knew what we were capable of um, and it hasn't been done very often but uh, we wanted to, to, to raise the bar and do it better than it's ever been done and um, you know we tried to do that and it uh, feels good ending it this way. That was Easton let's have Darius field that as well. Uh, it's just a daily pursuit of, of greatness and it's been a long season 15 weeks to get to this point and our guys have battled, you know, week after week, and just get to this point, it's an incredible feeling, and we're happy to go on top. Levi, do you have follow-up? Uh, you you got to just take it one day at a time. I mean, if you look at the big picture, you, it's January 10th of last year, and we say we're winning a national championship. I mean, how do you do that in one day? You don't. It's one day at a time, and uh, our guys did that, and it was, it's, it's been a good ride. Right in the middle in the front. Ross, I'm 24-7 Sports, uh, Easton and Darius. The bomb down the sideline, is that something that you guys have called or have run earlier this season? And how, how long were you kind of setting that one up? Yeah, uh, we've ran a similar uh, naked concept to that a bunch throughout the year, throughout the last couple years. And uh, we actually ran it in the first couple drives earlier in the game. And Chef did a great job setting them up and, um, you know, was calling for it on the sidelines after, after we did it. And Coach Mess did a good job getting to it. We protected it. Uh, guys sold it well up front on the run fake. And then uh, uh, 20 did the rest. Uh, just a great play call by Coach Mess. Um, the O-line did an unbelievable job holding up for protection, and Easton threw a beautiful pass and just catching a run after that. But uh, just a great job by the coaching staff getting to that play. Right here in front, to the left. Back and forth. <coughs> Easton, what is it about you and Darius this year that just connected? Uh, well, I think the biggest thing is uh, you see how hard he works and how much time he puts into it. So how do you not trust a guy that uh, you know is, is more prepared than anyone he could possibly be, 
possibly be going against. Uh, he's one of the hardest working guys I've been around and uh, has been a great teammate, uh, great friend and, and mentor for a lot of guys in that locker room. And um, we've been fortunate to have him on our team uh, these last four and a half years. And uh, um, there's nobody better. Go back to the front. Uh, Eric Peterson from Forum for all the players. Uh, seven championships in eight seasons. Uh, the first FCS team to have seven championships, more, one more than Georgia Southern. What, what does that mean for this group? Levi, you can start. I mean, uh, that just speaks to the tradition and culture that's been established here in North Dakota State, and that didn't start in 2011. I mean, that started way back, we talk about all the time in the 60s, and uh, we had the alumni, former players come out last uh, yesterday, and they talked about Bison Pride, and just, it's crazy how that hasn't changed at all. And uh, as players, former players, now we just look to continue that tradition. Darius. I know just as a, as a senior group and with Coach Kleiman, we wanted to leave our legacy, and it's just a special feeling to, to add to that, that tradition that we'll always be able to talk about that, you know, we won the championship in 2018. And Easton. Yeah, it, Levi hit it. There's just an unbelievable foundation, and um, we have great support from alumni and, and former players, guys that um, were doing the same things we were doing and, and just working hard and, and having that blue-collar work ethic and um, just go to work every single day and – uh, yesterday was a great example of it when you got 200, 300 former players out there. Um, how could you not be motivated to play? And so um, it's just been an honor to be a part of this program. Second row, far left. Easton, Stephen Hawkins with the AP. I, I know you, you've talked about it being a team thing, and obviously it is, but as a quarterback, you, the winningest quarterback in FCS history, you've got all these records. You followed Carson. You've got multiple championships. What does it mean? How do they put it in words right now? And if it wasn't for Carson coming back as a freshman, or your freshman year, you might have had three titles. <laughs> Yeah, what the Damn heck, Coach? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I screwed that up. Man, that <laughs> we'll get a hold of him tomorrow. Yeah, yeah trust me, he knows. Uh, no, uh, it, this place is special, and uh, quarterback's a u unique position in the fact that you're only as good as who you're surrounded with, um, and that position more than anything. And so I, I've just been for so fortunate, one, to be healthy, uh, but two, to just be around great people uh, in the administration, um, in the community. Uh, we have unbelievable support. And, uh, shoot, it's just been an honor being part of the locker room here uh, and the culture here the last four or five years. And uh, so, so thankful for, for every guy I've played with because, um, you know, as a freshman, you come in and uh, you, you just want to be a part of it and learn where you fit in. And uh, on the, along the way, man, you, you learn what Bison Pride really means. And uh, it's just been an absolute honor um, to wear green and gold. And, um, it, it's been unbelievable. In front here with Dom. Dom is OWDAY. Easton, the 2013 team told me they openly talked about going unbeaten. Did you guys have that any conversation about an unbeaten season in 2018? Yeah, and I think Coach said it. You know, we sat down um, as seniors with Coach in July and um, said, why can't we be the, the greatest ever? Why can't we be perfect? And uh, I'm not saying we're the greatest ever, but uh, we we worked and, and we tried to, to put ourselves in this position and and to go 15 and 0 and win another national championship is uh, is really hard to do and uh, man, these guys hit on it. It was a one day at a time and coach talked about stacking good days on good days and um, we didn't have very ma many bad days at all and uh, that's a credit to to the senior class. It's a credit to the coaching staff, uh, but it's also a credit to uh, the underclassmen and uh, that's why this place is going to be special for a long time. Second round in the middle. Uh, J.D. Moore, Sirius XM. Uh, question for all three of you guys. Uh, North Dakota State, seven championships. Uh, you won several under uh, Craig Bull. You won several under uh, Coach Kleiman. Uh, is Matt Entz going to be the next one to bring you even more championships in the future? Yes, and see what you want. You're all seniors. <laughs> Come on, Levi. Get him, under, get him going. Uh, I mean, being under Coach Entz's position, Coach, he's an incredible guy, and uh, – he just has so much passion for the program and passion for the players, and I think that's really special. And I think that's why I mean he was named head coach is because Mr. Larson saw what <laughs> what he's can do and capable of, and what he is I mean he's dead set on doing, and he's going to keep this thing rolling. Yeah, I, I agree. I believe Coach Ensign can come in and do an incredible job. We talk about next man up. That's not just for players; it's for coaches as well. And um, he's going to do a phenomenal job. And those who stay will be champions. So I'm excited to see what Coach Ensign does with the program. Yeah, he's an unbelievable man, an unbelievable coach, and. Uh, it's been an honor getting to know him and his family, and 
um, yeah, he's a bison through and through. He understands what it takes, and um, he's been a great role model and coach for our program. And uh, there's no doubt he's going to continue to do it the right way. And um, he'll surround himself with good people, and he's got a good locker room. Um, it'll be exciting to watch those guys. And that was Levi followed by Darius, then Easton back in front. Mike McFeely from the Forum. Easton, uh, Chris talked about, you know, he's graduating too and he's he's moving on. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with, with Coach Kleiman over the years? Um, a lot of football, obviously the personal connection too. Just can you touch on that a little bit for us? Um, yeah, uh, he's an unbelievable coach. Um, one of the, the smartest people I've been around when you when talk about football. Um, you know, he would come down and, and spend time with me uh, during the week the last couple of years. And um, shoot, sometimes it was for, for 15 minutes, sometimes it was an hour and a half. But he took time out of his day to help me prepare. And uh, sometimes I would learn more football, uh, you know, than I could remember uh, just in a 15 minute period. And so he's been a great coach. But I think more importantly, um, he's a father to, to all of us, uh, a great role model. Um, and does things the right way. And uh, just um, really thankful for um, him giving all of us the opportunity to be a part of this place um, and, and for him um, allowing us to get to know his family and be a part of his family and uh, forever indebted to him um, for what he's done for all of us. And uh, uh, we love him. A couple more for the student athletes back in front. Ross, I've been 24-7 sports abuse for, for all three of you guys. It would be a little ridiculous to ask you to reflect. I mean, it just it, the season's an, an hour, uh, you know, from having been over. But what is your message kind of to the guys that, that will be, you know, behind you, the the underclassmen, and, and uh, how excited are you guys to be now a part of this Bison family and the Bison alumni that show up at that practice and, and uh, you know, have, have fun with the whole thing? Darius, you can lead us off on that question. Uh, I think for the young guys, just keep attacking. They know that uh, – they know what they have to do next year in order to be great, but um, uh, I'm excited for them, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just they did a great job, and I'm looking forward to see what these underclassmen do next year. Levi, I mean that was that was us last year, same situation, new group of guys, and uh, I mean North Dakota State recruits excellent people as long as players, and uh, I think that uh, that's part of the formula for success here. Easton, yeah. Uh, Levi hit it. There's great people in that locker room. Uh, there's a great junior class full of leaders that, that, that led this year. And uh, uh, it's going to be fun uh, and exciting watching them and seeing them grow and, and step up. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's just been an honor to play with those guys. Third row in the middle. I've been getting Zamel an honor to the flag. This is for the players. Uh, I'm sure there's emotions that you guys feel when you put that jersey on for the last time. And, and you've talked about wearing the green and gold. I was just wondering if you could um, try and articulate what you think you'll feel when you take it off for the final time. Uh, these five years have been really special. Uh, Fargo is like a second home to me, and, and Bison Nation's embraced all of us. And uh, you know, to be around these coaches, these coaches, and, and the players for five years, I'll never forget this place. And I, you know, I love it. You know, and I'm a Bison through and through. So uh, once I take this uniform off, it's going to be real emotional. But I look forward to uh, coming back as an alumni, and you know, just seeing this place continue to have success. That was Darius Easton. Why don't you take that question as well? Um, yeah, it, it'll be it'll be emotional, uh, but I know uh, we're all proud as heck um, to represent this program and and to be a Bison. Once a Bison, always a Bison, and um, just really really thankful that uh, we all had the opportunity to be a part of this thing because it's a special place and um, it, it'll be tough taking it off for the last time. But uh, excited to to follow those guys and uh, cheer them on. Levi, I think they hit it right on the head. I mean. Once a bison, always a bison, bison through and through. It's, I mean, it sounds cliche, but it, it's true. It is what it is. Okay. One more for the student athletes. Back in front of Jeff. Uh, Jeff Kopak. Easton, was comparing yourself to 2013 part of the equation this year at all as a team? Uh, no. It was about us and, and what we could control and what we could do. Um, and we had a great senior class. And yeah, obviously, there's a lot of things similar in the fact, you know, senior classes and. Uh, size wise and, and stuff like that but at the end of the day it, it was about us and what we could control and um, coach put together a really good plan for us and, and then we knew the process and just took it one day at a time and um, it was hard uh, it was challenging uh, but just thankful uh, that we went through it together and, and finished the right way man thank you very much congratulations uh, we'll let you guys go and uh, coach no coach Kleiman you're next actually <laughs> Get some hugs in, but then we need you back. Love you, thank you. Love you, buddy. Love you. Love you. Thank you. All right.
questions for head coach Chris Kleiman. Start in the front on the far right there, coach. Did the movie end the right way with Easton running to the end zone and you holding up the trophy? Yeah, it really did. It was a special journey and, and um, to go out on top with these guys uh, over the last few weeks, knowing it was going to be my last opportunity for a couple of games and um, to have Easton put it on his shoulders in the semifinal game and then championship game for us to play a really good football team and play really well. Yeah, it, uh, 15-0. and End it with a national championship. Boy, it doesn't end any better than that. The, the story is complete. In the middle. Keith Albertson, KVRR. Coach, are you glad that Easton ran it into the end zone instead of sliding down inside the five? Yeah, he and I talked about it afterwards and stuff. He was going to score a touchdown. I don't blame him. Get in the end zone. and um, I know the right thing to do maybe would be to slide and stuff, but we were – we were in pretty good shape, and I thought we'd stop him, but um, he was probably too dang tired to fall down anyway. He just wanted to finish the finish the journey there. <clears throat> Back in front. Dom. Dom is OWDAY. Chris, I asked you this last year about Ty and Georgia Southern. Now you passed him in eight years to have the most national championships. What's that mean to, to you? Wow, that, that's that's – Pretty remarkable. Uh, I know those Georgia Southern teams well, and uh, they were a dynasty for a number of years, and uh, this has been an absolute dynasty, and there's no ifs, ands, or buts. This is, I think, the greatest run in college football. It's so cool that I've been uh, a part of it and um, been part of it as an assistant, as a coordinator, and a head coach, and just truly blessed. Came to Fargo eight years ago, took a chance with my family to come to Fargo, didn't know much about, uh, other than they had great tradition, great football tradition. And, um, uh, knew it because of Daryl Mudra, knew it because of Ardell Wiegant, and uh, it was a pretty good move for me after eight years. <laughs> On the right-hand side. Nolan Schmidt, Bison and Illustrated. Chris, y you clearly got emotional when Easton was talking about the impact that you've had on him and the other seniors. Can you talk about a little bit the impact that they've had on you? Yeah, uh, it, uh, I spend so much time with these guys, and this is – we talk about it all the time. This is really hard to do. Uh, what um, – going undefeated, being around them as much as we are, uh, answering the bell every week, not having a day, a, a poor day, not having a poor Saturday. Everybody thinks that uh, it, it's just an easy process, and it's not. And it's uh, You attack the process every day. Uh, I spend a ton of time with Easton. Uh, I was in all three of these guys' homes uh, visiting with their parents and told them that uh, I would take care of them, and uh, they've taken care of me. I, I've been so blessed to be a part of this program and they've done way more um, for me than I'll ever do for them but uh, I'll be forever uh, indebted to those guys and, and they know how to get a hold of me. Ross Ugland Bison Report. Chris, how kind of cool is it for you to hand the program off to a friend, somebody that you hired <laughs> and, and brought here and what can the fan base kind of expect from Matt Ants? Uh, the culture is not going to change. Um, Matt's uh, one of my closest friends. When I was able to get the head job here in 2013, going into 2014, he was the first phone call I made. And I, I wanted uh, Matt to join me because I know what kind of person he is. I knew he was a really good football coach. But um, coaching football is one thing. Being a great role model, being a great mentor, being able to lead young men is, is more important than X's and O's. And uh, he's that. And I'm so happy for Matt. Matt's uh, – the program's in great hands, guys. The, the, the culture is established. Um, we kind of pass the torch from the seniors to the juniors just now in the locker room. Um, it, it's going to be hard. We, we know that. Shoot, this was hard this year. The, the program's in great shape. Matt Ince and he and Matt and I are going to continue to talk on a weekly basis. I know we will. And I, I'm so excited for Matt, Brendan, and, and the kids because he's, he's earned the opportunity. Eric Peterson from the Forum. Uh, look back over in eight years as an assistant head coach, 112 and eight. Do you still marvel at that? And then when Easton broke free on that last touchdown, run, did parts of your career flash back, or what was kind of going through your mind? No, but you know, you say 112 and eight. I mean, holy cow! I mean, that's that, that's that's something that movies are made out of, and dreams are made out of, and books are written about. You know, it's. 112 wins and eight losses in seven national championships. Um, I don't know. I, I pinch myself every day. And, you know, we were able to win seven out of eight. 
And lo and behold, if we'd only won six out of eight, how much ridicule we'd had because we'd only gotten six national championships. You know, but seven out of eight. And the one year we didn't win it, we beat Iowa uh, at Kinnick Stadium when they were ranked 12th. That was still a pretty good year and getting beat in the semifinals. You know, not, not everybody thinks that. I, I learned that at Hornbacher's one day, but um, <laughs> it, uh, it's still, it was still a pretty good year. I can front to Jeff. Chris, Shepard had one touchdown last year. That's it. How about that? What, what changed this year with him and Easton? I I'm just remember all the time going in June and July and going to work out and seeing those two guys on Dakota Field or out on our practice fields always getting together, always throwing, always working timing routes, always being around each other. Both of them are graduates. So it was great because I'd see Shep down with Easton when I'd go down there and visit with Easton during the week. Shep would be down there. And those two were just so much in sync. The roommates, their best friends, they were so in sync. And uh, I, I knew that he was going to have a breakout year. And uh, I told the guys, I think on ESPN, I thought if they pressured us that he'd have uh, 10 receptions for 250 yards. And it was half that. He had five for 125 and two scores. On the right-hand side. Anymore, Sirius XM. Coach, I know you're uh, a head coach of two programs for a couple more hours. Nope. <laughs> uh, but why was it so important to you uh, to finish the job here at North Dakota State before fully going on at Kansas State? Well, I think it was important to the seniors first. I think it was, a, it was really important to uh, our administration here, led by Matt Larson, that uh, he wanted me to finish this journey. And I think it was really important to Gene Taylor at Kansas State that uh, we were able to finish this journey because uh, Gene was a part of it in 2013. And, and uh, you, you can't quit on those guys with a few weeks left. They've given me everything for four and five years. And um, I so, once again, I so appreciate our administration at North Dakota State getting together with Kansas State and saying, hey, let's make this work. And the guys were going to have it no other way. They, we talked, and I was, Easton said it, I think, on Friday. I was transparent with those guys from the start, uh, and I think that probably helped the situation. Uh, but I was not going to go out without going out with these guys. Eric. Eric Peterson, Ford Newspaper. Uh, just talk about the Stanley Jones play when it was kind of a little back and forth there in the third quarter. How big was that, and is it more significant when a, a kid who played in, at a North Dakota high school makes a play like that? Well, it absolutely is when a kid from North Dakota makes a play because um, it's an under-recruited state and there's some great football players in North Dakota. But to, to have the sequence of <clears throat> us getting a big turnover and then us turning it back over to flip the momentum again, because they had momentum going into halftime. We took the momentum right back and then gave it back to them again. And then Stanley makes another uh, makes a great play. Uh, it was you know you don't see that very often three turnovers that quickly. But uh, and then we were able to capitalize on it with a great play that uh, I think he I think Easton hit Shep on that. That was a big time play by Stanley and really happy for all those guys, especially those really cool for those kids from North Dakota. Jeff, uh, Chris, your starting fullback wasn't in the game today. What happened there? Yeah, uh, uh, unfortunately, and we love Brock. Brock. Uh, uh, failed an NCAA drug test uh, after the semifinal game for a banned stimulant. Um, and uh, we went with the appeal all the way till Thursday. Uh, it, the appeal was denied, and so he was ineligible to play uh, the football game and feel awful for Brock. Everybody in that locker room loves Brock. Brock was a part of this national championship, and that's what happened. I assume the ESPN ratings were a little bit higher today in Kansas. What do you say? What's your message to the folks who are watching the Bison today down in Kansas? Well, thank you so much for the support. And uh, thank those uh, uh, players that I'm about uh, ready to go um, start another journey with. They put some pretty cool stuff out on social media. Um, excited about uh, the challenge ahead. Um, it was cool to be able to wrap this up here with, with these guys and, and do it the right way. But uh, uh, I know this, there's a lot of people in North Dakota that are going to be fans of Kansas State, and there's a ton of people in Kansas that are fans of North Dakota State. And it's, it's really neat how both uh, institutions came together. Time for a few more. Chris, what was uh, Bruce's status? Was that a game time deal, and, and when did you make the decision he couldn't play? Well, we knew it was going to be really tight, um, and it, he didn't, it didn't respond as well Monday, Tuesday of this week, but he still wanted to give it a go. Uh, and we were able to dress a few more guys, and, and so we warmed him up, and he and I talked, and we used him as a play and a decoy because I wanted him to play in the national championship game. But Bruce is also a, a very much a team guy and said, you know what, let's give it to those guys. Let's give it to Lance and Ty, Seth, because I can't go. And uh, so I appreciate that. You know, Levi did that last year with Chris Board. 
we thought Levi would be able to play, and he said, I can't, I can't go. Chris is better right now. And uh, uh, Bruce did the same thing, gave it a little go in warm-ups and said it just wasn't responding, and that's a team guy. Yeah, I think those are typically six to eight weeks, something, and he was back in four. And, um, you know, how happy are you for Lance Dunn? For starters, he's from my hometown in Waterloo, Iowa. And, you know, to have a championship game taken away the year before, even though he played a little bit, he was 70%. And then to think he was going to have it taken away again, um, he, he was not going to be denied. And when we came back after the semifinal game, and he started practicing a little bit, and he just started getting better and better. Then we took four days off. Well, he was he was locked in, and he was a difference maker today. What's going on in your mind when you've got the trophy in front of you and thousands of Bison fans chanting "Thank you, Climate"? It's uh, really special, uh, obviously. You know, I love the fan base here. Um, they travel in droves, no matter where we're playing. Uh, Frisco, especially, it's it's it was so cool because I, I mean we had had to have twenty thousand people out there, and I know there was a bunch probably in the tailgate lots too. Uh, it was. It was really special, really cool, uh, something I'll never forget. And then um, the BFPA, the Bison Football Players Association, uh, made me an honorary member, gave me a hat, gave me a uh, lanyard, um, and told me once a Bison, always a Bison. And I'm not even a, a graduate of NDSU, but I'm a part of the BFPA. And uh, I'm sure that Sean Fredericks will send me an invoice, and I'll be happy to send him a check. Uh, Chris, you were in attendance last night for the Walter Payton Award, and uh, right here, sorry. Yep. <laughs> you were in attendance last night at the banquet, and obviously you saw where the award went. Um, how happy were you for Easton today to have the game that he did, especially concluding it in that fashion? Yeah, I mean, he was one of the best players in, in, in college football, and, and I, I, I thought he should have won the award, but I'm not a voter in the award. But anybody that wins 49 times over a, a career is the best player in college football at the FCS level, and that's that's my opinion. That's a hands-down no-brainer to me. Happy for the guys that, that were also honored for whatever position, but you got to realize I, I'm pretty biased on that too with my own guy. I don't see your favorite reporter in here today, Coach, but uh, we'll let Jeff, maybe he's your second favorite, uh, wrap us up. Thanks for the book plug, by the way. Yeah. Are you going to do another one? Oh, totally not playing. Did that affect your play calling at all? I don't, I don't believe so. Um, I think it was one of those. It was, we talked about it on Friday. Was it going to be a depth issue? You know, it would have helped him as far as getting some uh, more reps for and spreading the repetitions out. But I don't, I don't think we changed anything. In fact, I know we didn't change anything of our game plan. Coach, thank you very much. To put it lightly, job well done. Thank you. People of Fargo, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a great run. All of you guys that have covered me for the last five years for sure and uh, eight years, um, appreciate you guys challenging the heck out of me. Um, moving forward, I'll do anything for you. I don't know when I'll give you my number. Might, <laughs> might, be, might be a little bit, but uh, um, thank you. you. You know, you guys are the reason why NDSU is on the map all the time. And your coverage of North Dakota State football, and you guys know, um, it is really special. And so... I can't thank you guys enough. Now, get yourselves down to Manhattan and watch us play. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.